Good afternoon, everybody. Again, thank you for joining us for the update about COVID-19 in our area. Today, on Tuesday, we again have a neighboring county joining us. Today, Chippewa County is with us to share what's happening across the Chippewa Valley. So we're pleased to have Angie here to share her updates as well. Um, we will go through some of, the, some of our usual updates and at the end have opportunity for questions. Again, this is a tough situation and the numbers continue to be concerning across the state and nation. And I know the news is concerning across the state and nation. It's been difficult for people in our community as well. So I do again want to acknowledge that. The election is on today. I think that message has been widely um, disseminated. Uh, the in-person election is happening today. Polling sites are open. We strongly encourage people to go and vote. It's part of our responsibility as citizens, and I hope people do that. A lot of work happened to make the polling sites around here as safe as possible given COVID-19, and I'm really confident that as long as people pay attention to physical distancing, um, we are in a good spot in this part of the state. State. The reason for all of the work that happened over the weekend and yesterday for trying to not have in-person election was the risk statewide for a statewide election happening, particularly in those places where the numbers are very high and where it wasn't possible to have small numbers be at poll sites like we are able to do in a better way here. Reports from the Eau Claire polls, at least, have been positive, um, very strong measures in place, and people abiding by that. So I, I feel good about the fact that we are doing elections in this part of the state in the safest way possible. Polls are open across the state until 8 p.m. An additional change that happened late yesterday to make sure that everybody is aware is that absentee ballots must be returned today or postmarked today. So returned by 8 p.m. today or postmarked today. We no longer have the ability because of a decision by the U.S. Supreme Court um, to have those absentee ballots be postmarked after today's date. So a reminder to everybody if they did receive their ballot to make sure that that either gets in the mail, postmarked today, or returned. If they requested an absentee ballot and did not yet receive it, they need to go to the poll site and vote. Um, again, please make sure you participate in that process as much as you are able to. In Wisconsin, a status update, there are 2,578 cases of COVID-19 tested um, positive in the state of Wisconsin, an increase from yesterday of 138 people. 92 deaths, an increase of 15 individuals. There are 28,512 negative tests in Wisconsin. The state is reporting the hospitalization of 745 people, again, 29%, about a third, quarter to a third of the population that has been tested has been hospitalized at some point um, during their, their time as being positive. A reminder to everybody that there is no safe drug to take to prevent COVID-19. There is only over-the-counter the usual treatments for rest and sleep and fluids for someone that has symptoms of COVID-19. In the U.S., there have been cases of people being ser seriously ill or dying from taking drugs that are not recommended and doing things that are not safe because they are worried about their COVID-19 status. Any medication you take should be discussed with your primary care provider. Um, all of the different medications that are floating around the internet as treatments or prevention um, courses for this, for this illness are, are not, in fact, um, things that people should be doing right now. Talk to your doctor, um, talk to your health care provider before you decide to do any of that. Um, we will now have um, Angie share with us some updates from Chippewa. I will be back then to share Eau Claire updates and answer questions.
Good afternoon. Thank you, Liska. My name is Angie Weideman, and I am the Chippewa County Public Health Director. Um, as of this morning, we do have 16 positive cases of COVID-19 in Chippewa County. Um, I want to assure the public that we have followed up with all of the positive cases and their case contacts as well. Um, if you did have contact with this individual, you will be reached out to by the Chippewa County Department of Public Health. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit today about how the COVID-19 pandemic can change the way that we interact with people in the world. Um, well, we do want to consider our physical safety. It can sometimes take a toll on our mental health um, to be isolated or to be away from people. Um, you might recognize different feelings coming about that include feeling angry, sad, worried. Um, upset, and those are all natural responses to times of uncertainty. Uh, to help with this, the state of Wisconsin has put together some resources on their COVID-19 page called Resilient Wisconsin. Just a few reminders that go along with staying resilient. Um, we talk about the three goods, making sure you eat good for you foods, get a good night's sleep, and a good amount of exercise. And those are three factors that keep people healthier in general. Um, also remember that if you are talking with people and maybe you're feeling a little bit overloaded with information about COVID-19, you can set a good boundary and let people know, I wanna talk about something else for a little while. I need to get my mind off of this. Um, it's also, it's good to um, be connected to the community and the media, but sometimes taking a little break from social media can actually be helpful. Getting outside, taking a walk, talking um, with a neighbor while using social distancing. These are all things that are healthy for people and good for their mental health. Um, if you do know someone who is in crisis, please remember that Northwest Connections is there and you can call them at 888 552-6642 and reach their crisis line. Um, for more information on Resilient Wisconsin, you can visit dhs.wisconsin.gov and look for the COVID-19 information. I also wanna remind people who are working from home that many employers do have an EAP program or employee assistance program. Um, those EAP programs can still be reached out to as well if anyone is in need of support. Um, for the most up-to-date information for Chippewa County, please follow us on our Facebook page or visit co.chippewa.wi.us. And Liska will come back now to give um, a further Eau Claire update. Thank you for that, Angie. Not only is it important for all of you to know that we partner in the Chippewa Valley, but we have some amazing expertise in Angie specifically, but in Chippewa County around access to mental health resources and a quick understanding of that. So I appreciate that she's here to share that directly. We'll make sure that those same phone numbers and websites um, are available to everybody after listening to this webcast. In Eau Claire, we again have 21 confirmed cases of COVID-19 by testing. That is um, not, there has been no increased numbers since yesterday's report. Our testing numbers are now at 1,000 people tested in Eau Claire County with 875 negative. The remaining 104 are pending. Um, an additional update for all of you, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but um, we know that this week is a week that um, typically many families are preparing for family celebrations and religious celebrations. We want to walk through in more detail um, the guidance from the state on both of those things. Even though we know it's difficult, we are under the Safer at Home order, and that Safer at Home order is really meant for us to be with our household. And that includes, unfortunately, during this time when we'd love to be even more so with family, even more so with our um, those people that are in a religion where they gather as a group, want to be with those groups. It is not something that can happen with our Safer at Home order. It's tough, and we understand that. 
I will, like all of the rest of you, on Easter Sunday when I typically would see my adult children and my fa other family members be connecting with them via another way. And that is what we are asking all people to do. We need to keep our circle very small. We need to make sure that we are not saying, oh, it's just my grandma, it's just my mom I'd like to have over. We need to keep our circle just to our household, even during these holidays where we like to gather. We know that some area churches and Wisconsin churches have been advertising for religious services this weekend. Unless fewer than 10 people are gathering, either in a building or fewer than 10 cars gathering for an outside service, those religious services are not allowable according to the order. We want to be really clear with that messaging and we want to make sure that if people have questions who are planning religious services that they talk to us in advance and we are certainly willing to do that. Religious services can be done in so many different ways. We know it's not perfect. Those people that are part of a religious community like to be together, and it's an important part of practicing those religions. But in this time, we have to, for a short amount of time, recognize that putting people at risk by gathering together is not allowable. Those places that are doing small services, less than 10 people, need to also remember that anybody can be considered COVID positive in those settings. Um, nobody with symptoms should be in those settings and they should only be done in ways that keep physical distancing very clearly delineated and make sure that people are following all the required practices in the order. We talked about this a little bit yesterday again, but streaming services, those services that can go out over other media are really what we're recommending. We're recommending that people find creative ways with your household to also celebrate both religiously and as a non-religious holiday. Um, and we've seen some creative examples of that um, already posted on various sites. Um, so again, if there are questions about religious services, we would like through the COVID hotline to hear from those organizations. And that number again is 715-831-7425. An email will be going out to all of our connects at various religious groups that we have in Eau Claire County. We are proactively going to be sending a message out later today about this as well. So people will also have an email to connect to if they have specific questions and they are someone that organizes those services. Again, a reminder that this is Public Health Week, so please find a moment to celebrate something positive about the health of the public. Um, our website, again, is coronavirus.echealthdepartment.org. Please go there for up-to-date information on what's happening in Eau Claire County, not dissimilar to what's happening in other counties across the state. The state website is also a wonderful resource for people for getting current information about what's happening related to COVID-19. We know this is hard. Um, reach out and find someone that you can touch base with in a, in a personal way when you need that. We encourage that to happen. Um, we are part way through the order being implemented, um, but we have a number of weeks to go. So do know that that um, is an important thing to think about and find creative ways to stay healthy and to stay strong. We'll open it up for questions now. Yes. So the question is, should we see this as a positive sign that there are no increased numbers of positive cases in Eau Claire County? I do believe it's a little early to tell. Um, our numbers have steadily increased, um, and that to me is a good sign. We have not gotten a big spike in numbers, which to me says that our messages from the beginning about keeping circles small make a difference. Um, 
It is a bit early to say whether that um, not having cases today is an enormous change, but we certainly are tracking that carefully. The state is also seeing steady increases in numbers for the most part, and again, that is a relatively good sign. Um, enormous doubling of numbers is the thing that we are really trying to avoid with this safer at home order. Yes. Uh, last week there were some issues with some businesses where they were trying to get past the stay at home order, you know, trying to you know, sneak people in the back or whatever. Um, just wondering, have you guys had any other issues within the city or county? Um, are people being better with the complying mm -hmm. or where do we stand? Yeah, so the question is, what are we seeing with compliance with the Safer at Home order? Overall in the community, I think people are paying attention and staying with their household. There are a number of instances where that is not happening, and I would say that where across the state we are seeing challenges, very frankly, is with our younger population, their young adult population that is overall healthy, overall may not see this as a high risk issue. Um, and we really are imploring, imploring them to pay attention to the order. Um, they particularly may be in settings where they are exposing others and they don't realize that they are infected. And it's critically important that we keep all circles small. Um, for the most part, um, the communication with businesses across the, the area has been very positive. Some small challenges, but um, with education, that's really worked at least in Eau Claire County, and I'm assuming across this region. Yes. So the question specifically is about the drugs, and I spoke to the fact that there is no proven drug right now to either prevent or treat COVID-19. There is a lot of conversation about a specific malaria drug that is available um, and whether or not that could support um, a positive response in those with COVID-19 that has not been studied fully. We do not know if that's going to be something that is available. And frankly, we still have malaria in our world and that drug is needed in those cases where malaria is an issue. No medication should be taken for any other reason than what it was prescribed for. So at this point in time, we do not have a treatment and people should be talking to their healthcare provider and working through with them um, any instances where they are looking at other options. Yes. At yesterday's uh, National Task Force press briefing, uh, Dr. Deborah Brooks was asked to clarify an answer she gave on Saturday about how often you should go to the grocery store or the pharmacy. And I thought it was pretty clear. She seemed to say, as much as possible, it should be one person from the household and try to have it be every couple weeks. So I, just, I know you've talked a lot about things, but I wondered if you could just speak to that, if you agree with her, and just kind of clarify. Sure. So the question is really at a national level, they've talked about access of essential services for those things that we all need to do as human beings, get groceries, get our um, medications that may be prescribed. How often should we do that? We have talked about this a couple of times, but the very simple message is as few people going as few times as possible for those essential things that are needed to run a household is really our expectation with this order. So family groups going out to do have an outing away from home with a large group of people wandering a store that has lots of possible things to buy but are not essential for long periods of time are absolutely not what we need. It's a, it's a risk to that family and that those multiple individuals that may go out multiple times in a week, but it's also a risk to those essential workers that are there being exposed to that many people. So our ask to everybody is as few people, as, as infrequently as possible, and in, and in a, only a way that they are purchasing things that are absolutely essential.
Um, wondering if maybe Andy can uh, answer this one regarding Chippewa County uh, voting today, how things have been going, and then did you guys as a county have to make any changes with polling places or anything like that? Sure, um, thank you. And um, we use our incident command structure system, and we have a safety officer that started preparing for this over a month ago. Um, before the state guidance even came down. And the first thing that we did was recommended that no one over age 60 work at the polls. And we asked school teachers and county employees to volunteer who were not in um, a risk category per age or medical background. Um, and thankfully we did have a number of people that stepped forward and did volunteer to work. Um, we did a lot of spacing um, so that people were able to social distance. And I did hear from a few different clerks that things were going very well in Chippewa County. Um, I felt the same way that Liska did that, um, you know, at the local level and being a smaller county, it may have been easier than Milwaukee or Madison and some of the larger communities and some of the communities that do have larger um, numbers of positive cases. So overall, locally, I do think it went pretty well, but um, we definitely were concerned for some of the larger counties in the state. And, and it is election day. I want to make an enormous shout out to those um, clerks across all of our counties, the poll workers across the entire state who have really had probably an election like no other election before. And they have worked countless hours and set up in a way that really has been challenging. But um, I we have not had a single uh, clerk across Eau Claire County, and I'm certain that's true in all of our counties, who has not understood the critical need to do this right and not supported their poll workers. So um, I, I hope everybody realizes the number of hours and the time and the intensity that has gone into this. Always true with an election, and this election, an unbelievable um, load on that group of individuals. And when I stopped at the local poll site um, that I typically go to to just thank them at seven this morning, they were all smiling. And I, I mean, it's just, it's an amazing public service that we have people to do it. And we are very fortunate that they, people were able to step forward and support that. Any other questions today? Again, thank you for being here. We'll be back tomorrow to share updates and um, we appreciate people paying attention. Be well.